what's back on the market, currently eligible for the federal tax rebate, and red hot. We are here with the new entry level trim, the 2LT, and I specify new because the front wheel drive 1LT that was the entry level trim at the initial launch is currently not available during this secondary launch as of March 8th. This also has a new starting MSRP. The initial starting MSRP was at $56,700. Now, the new starting MSRP for this 2LT is $50,195, so we love a lower MSRP. So the Blazer EV is sitting on GM's Ultium platform. Now when you hear the word platform, we're not necessarily talking about the actual frame it sits on, more or less it's the Ultium battery technology. So that means that this is gonna be built on the same platform as the Cadillac Lyric, the Honda Prologue, the Acura ZDX, and technically the Hummer EV and the future Cadillac IQ. Again, it's just new technology that GM has partnered out um, to make all these really cool new EVs. This Blazer EV is an all-wheel drive 2LT. It's powered by an 85 kilowatt per hour battery pack. So you'll get up to 288 horsepower, up to 333 pound-feet of torque, and that's gonna get you about 279 miles of driving range, which is technically on the lower end for this trim. If you go up to the rear-wheel drive RS trim, then you can get up to 324 miles of range, which makes the Blazer EV like right up there with the competition. And you can DC fast charge at a peak charging rate of 150 kilowatt per hour. Our Blazer EV is configured with the confidence and driver convenience package. It's gonna give you some additional driver technology resources such as adaptive cruise control, HD surround vision, enhanced automatic emergency braking, intersection automatic emergency braking, reverse automatic braking, rear pedestrian alert, and side bicyclist alert. My favorite feature on the Blazer EV is the, you get a handlebar mustache included with it. And if you get the Blazer EVRS, then you get a light up handlebar mustache right across the front. It's pretty cool. And then moving around to the side, on this 2LT, you will get 19 inch wheels. Ours is equipped with the comfort and convenience package. So that's also going to include um, power folding, power adjustable, heated side mirrors, and um, these aluminum roof rails. Looking at the back of the Blazer EV, you'll notice that they have the little blue E right here in Blazer, just like they have on the Silverado. So anytime there's an E in their name, it'll be a little blue E, just to um, signify it's an EV. One cool thing that the, a couple cool things actually, that the comfort and convenience package are gonna get you are some additional trailering resources. So like a hitch view and a hitch guidance to make it easier to connect a trailer to your Blazer EV. And my favorite is the AutoSense power lift gate. So that's a hands-free lift gate system that when you approach the vehicle with the key fob in your pocket, you don't even have to take it out. It'll sense the key and it will chime three times and open up your lift gate. This is turned off from the factory and it's easy to turn off once you've turned it on. You can either do it from your infotainment system or press and hold the button for a few seconds to deactivate that in case you just don't want your trunk popping open every time you walk up to it. You can also um, open your lift gate with your key fob. And inside we have so much storage space. With the second row folded down, you'll get up to 60 cubic feet of space. And then even more so underneath here, since we, you notice we didn't talk about a, a frunk because it doesn't have one, uh, but you do have even more storage space underneath here as well, just to keep certain items concealed if you would like. And there um, are um, points, access points here if you want to put in a cargo cover. 
When you get inside of the Blazer EV, you will notice the lack of a power button. When you come inside with your key, all you have to do is press the brake pedal and the car will turn on. And then when you exit the vehicle with the key, the car will just turn off. You do have an option to manually turn the car off right here on your infotainment screen. You just press that off button and then confirm turning the vehicle off. So speaking of all of this infotainment system, you have, it's 17.7 .7 inches diagonally is how they measured this. All you need to know is it is a massive infotainment system, really clear graphics. They're so easy to read because they're so big, which I love. And then you have 11 inches of um, a gauge cluster here, digital gauge cluster that gives you all kinds of information. And some more um, really important buttons that you'll find in your infotainment system are going to include your one pedal driving that are so easy, you just press it and you turn it on and then press it to turn it off. You also can set the level of one pedal driving from off to on or high. So high is going to slow your vehicle down with more force if that's what you select. Moving forward, coming on down here, we do have actual buttons. By the way, these knobs are like perfect, typical GM, like clicky knobs that give you like good feedback so you know you're actually turning down the volume or turning up the fan. Um, you'll have um, a few climate control buttons down here, your defrost, auto AC. Um, you have these really interesting little fans here as well that are adjustable in a few different directions. And they have like these weird little blades can you hear that? Oops, might get annoying, I'm sorry. Anyways, moving on down, you do have two USB-C charging capabilities right here and a whole lot of storage. There is no sunglasses storage space, but that's okay because you have plenty of space deep down in here to put um, more stuff. So technically, these seats are an upgrade with the comfort and convenience package that I think is pretty well worth it. I'll tell you why you will get a six-way adjustable, power adjustable passenger seat, an eight-way power adjustable driver seat. Both are heated and have lumbar support. You're also gonna get upgraded with a wireless phone charger, an auto dimming rear view mirror, which is pretty convenient, and a soft touch heated steering wheel, which is very handy when you're driving an EV. And uh, second thing about the steering wheel, that's my favorite part, is the audio control buttons remain behind the steering wheel, which is like a notable GM feature, so you can control the volume on your right and the um, track or stations on the left. I want to take you through a quick tour of a few of these screens in your infotainment system, including all of your drive modes. So you have normal, sport, snow, and ice, and you have a my mode so that you can adjust um, a custom setup here. So your brake feel, acceleration, even down to your motor sound. So if you want your motor to sound like a little bit more aggressive, you could turn it on sport, or if you want absolutely zero sound coming from it because it is an EV, so it doesn't actually produce sound, then you could just turn it off and be real. <laughs> Moving on back to your home screen. Um, a few things here, you do have like a Google Assistant. You'll notice all of these um, Google friendly things. So I do wanna say that this is one of the vehicles that has been affected by the fact that it doesn't have Apple CarPlay. So the only way that you'll be able to connect your iPhone is via Bluetooth. So this is a very um, Google friendly vehicle. <laughs> Another um, really handy screen that you will be using a lot is your charging screen. So there's so many cool features here. So you can um, customize it so that it only charge to a specific percentage. So you might not want to charge up to 80% or past 80% or even like as low as 75. So it is recommended that you don't charge past 80. Um, but if you want to charge it to 100, I suppose you absolutely could. Um, just know that from 80 to um, 80 to 100 is gonna take a long time to, to get to 100. Anyways, moving on. Um, you can also schedule like when you want your vehicle to charge. Um, you have some more access here through your app um, once you sign in to see more details, you can create a scheduling, a charging schedule, um, and then even set your preconditioning temperature. So many really cool like preferred charge times. It's just so easy to access like and use how you want to be charging your EV. 
We've got some cool standard features in the back of the Blazer EV LT, including air vents, these adjustable air vents. You have two USB-C charging outputs and you do have an armrest with cup holders that fold down from your seats. Don't be surprised, like sometimes that those, none of those things are standard features. Sometimes you don't get air vents and sometimes you don't get cup holders in the second row. So I just wanted to mention that. And the most important thing here is the amount of leg room that you get in this EV. So behind um, this seat, here is currently adjusted for my driving height. I'm only 5'1". You can get up to 39 inches of rear leg room. Um, I would say I'm like below average of <laughs> height. So that's so much room. And then this seat here is adjusted as far back as it can go. Um, I would be able to sit back here and not be that uncomfortable. Like my knees are still not gonna even touch the back of this seat. So I love all of the space that this car has. I am super excited about the Blazer EV SS. Get it? <laughs> It'll be coming out in the next few months and it has a zero to 60 in under four seconds. Until then, let us know what you think of the LT trim in the comment section below. Bye.